Now, a new study of SARS-CoV-2 antibodies among blood donors in four provinces suggests actual infections may exceed officially diagnosed infections by a number of 10. Joining us now is Wendy Sykes, Manager of Donations at the South African National Blood Service, to interrogate what this means. Wendy, what is the significance of this development? So the, the good evening, first of all, and good evening to your viewers. So and thank you for allowing Sandus some time on on your show to actually discuss our study. So we we conducted a study of um, blood donors in four provinces of South Africa. Those um, provinces were the KwaZulu Natal, the Eastern Cape, the Northern Cape, and the Free State. Um, and what we found was, we could, this study first of all was conducted in January, and we um, found a much higher rate of um, antibodies for, to SARS-CoV-2 in our donors than what we had originally expected, and much higher than what is being reported um, from testing that is being done on, on you know, people who um, present with symptoms for SARS-CoV-2. Um, so this is, is important because at this time, so the study was conducted at the end of the second wave or towards the end of the second wave, so it was in January. And because of that, it can give us a snapshot of what's happening in the country at the moment. And these results can then be used by government to make decisions going forward on, you know, on what they do. Um, so that it's a very important study and the findings have got a lot of relevance. Well, tell us what the snapshot looks like. Okay. So as I mentioned, we tested um, those four provinces. And what we found was that from the actual donors, we found about 30% were positive. What was done then was we got some stat statisticians, sorry, that are from SESIMA, um, which is part of the University of Stellenbosch. And they took those results and they extrapolated them back into the general population. Um, what we found then was, so what they do then is they are able to come up with weighted estimates of what um, the population numbers would be. And what they found was between 32 and 63%. So in the um, Northern Cape, there was about a 32, they, if they, when they extrapolated back, 32% of people would have been, um, would have already had SARS-CoV-2. And in the Eastern Cape, up to 63%. Um, this has been um, corroborated by um, a report put out by Discovery this week as well, where they looked at excess death, death rates and um, said that more that they, from those figures, they estimate that more than 50% of the South African population have already had COVID-19. Well, very, very interesting. Now, how many po it participants is. took part in this study? So we tested uh, 4,858 um, blood donors, and all of those blood donors were asked to consent to be part of the study. We also did have um, ethics approval for the study, um, so we made sure that the donors' rights were, were maintained throughout the study and throughout the process. Was the sample size, would you say, representative of the population? So... <laughs> It's a, it, it may seem like a relatively small number, but it's the largest um, seroprevalence study that's been done in South Africa to date. Another study was done in the Western Cape, and the results from that study were very similar to what we've actually found um, now, which is good news because um, it, they prove, you know, they sort of prove each other. Um, what we did have, though, is... Um, we, um, and more white donors actually participated in the study than, and it's just because those are the people that came in to donate at the time. So we had an equal representation between our black donors and our white donors, and they made up about 80% of that um, 4,800 donors. Now, in your mind, what impact, if any, do these findings have in terms of rollout of the vaccine? Well, it's actually a difficult one to to for us to say because we're, you know we're a blood transfusion service, um, so that's not really our purview. So um, the the vaccine is still very important because if you look at the different variant that we've had with the second wave of um, SARS-CoV-2 infections now, um, these antibodies that the donors are presenting with 
may not be protective against a different variant of the virus. And viruses do mutate and that's their way of surviving. So they do mutate over time. And um, if somebody is infected with one variant, um, that those antibodies may not be protective against a different one. So it's still very, very important for, for people to have the vaccine and the vaccine is still very important. The rollout is still going to be very important in our country, as is all of the measures that we are still taking. So wearing masks, washing hands, all of those things are still very, very important for South Africa. Now, I presume this information has been shared with the Department of Health. So yes, so we've actually published this. Um, it's not peer reviewed, but we have published. It was published last week. Um, and it has been widely disseminated. We did have a press conference this week as well. So the information has been widely disseminated. Well, tell us about the reaction that you've received, certainly from the medical fraternity. So, uh, yeah, so we've had a lot of interest, um, mainly from, from the news um, media outlets. Um, and we've, we've obviously done quite a few interviews and a radio and TV. Um, and there is a lot of interest in this information. What about the medical community itself? Uh, not much response there? So, uh, well, so from, as I mentioned, so Discovery have put out um, their own, they've had a look at our paper and they've put that out on their, um, under their banner as well, along with information that they've um, found from the excess death rates. And they've corroborated what we found as well. You know, they've said, so we find in between 32 and 63% um, of the population have been infected and, and they're saying over 50%. So, the, you know, the, the news is good. We, what we're finding is correct. Final question, Wendy. Are you able to identify which strain of the virus the antibodies came from? So unfortunately, not with the current testing that we've done. So the test that we do is, is the test that we've done is an antibody test. Um, and that doesn't tell you what variant or what strain of the virus, but we are hoping to do some additional testing um, in the next couple of weeks, which may very well tell us which strain of the virus um, or which, which antibodies are, you know, which strain the antibodies are to. Wendy Sykes, thank you so much for speaking to us.